It's all about the experience of eating this chili crab. And if your mouth burning, your hands like touching the wrong parts of your face, you will remember it and it should hit the spot. My name is Salal Mehta. I'm from Laut, Singapore, and we'll be making chili crab today. Chili crab is the national dish of Singapore and also happens to be one of my favorite dishes. We'll start with the aromatics first. So we need shallot. Singapore food, I believe the holy trinity would be shallot, garlic, and this guy right here, balata. Shrimp paste makes everything better. And it just adds like a nice layer of umami to your dish. Singapore food is really interesting because it's in the middle of like all these different trade routes, so many different Southeast Asian cultures coming together. The Indian mixing with the Malay. You have the Chinese mixing with the Malay. Chinese and the Indians. The curry powder and all these different ingredients go into certain dishes that you wouldn't see it go into. Food just being created to satisfy all these different cultures. I don't think it happens anywhere else in the world. We're using chili sauce, we're using fresh chili, we're using dry chili. If you feel like you don't want it to be this spicy, reduce the amount of chilies that you want. So we're just gonna soak some dry chilies. Smaller ones are usually spicier, so I think that should do it for us. This right here is fermented soybean. You don't want too much of it. Any kind of seafood, you can do with a sauce. If you don't eat crab, you can do it with lobster. You could even do it with shrimp. This is known as rumpa. Basically, all the blended ingredients together. The Malay and Singaporean cuisine, there's always a rumpa in the dish. I don't know if I'm feeling emotional with the shallots or I'm, <laughs> if I'm feeling emotional with cooking this crab for you guys today. So we're good with this. So in Singapore, you would eat it with Sri Lankan mud crab, which are impossible to source over here. I think these Vancouver crabs are the next best thing, like the ideal crab to cook it with. So we're just gonna get rid of the tail. All this stuff, no good. The golden stuff you keep. Get rid of all these sharps. So we're just quartering the crabs over here. Here I'm just cracking it so that when we cook the rumpa and the sauce and everything, all that can penetrate inside the meat. In terms of flavor, I think it captures Singapore. It's sweet, it's spicy, it's slightly sour. It has a lot of personality to it. Where else would you see all these different ingredients coming together under one plate? And it kind of represents what Singapore people are, you know? It's a mix of everything. This is the soul of Singaporean cuisine. It comes in a like, little cake like this. A little goes a long way. Don't let the smell scare you away. So now we're just toasting the balachan in here. So at this stage, you'll smell the balachan. <laughs> so once you start smelling it, we'll, in, we'll put in the rampa. Don't waste any of it. We're gonna put water in there later and then get everything out. So we're gonna slow cook this for a while. So at this point, you see, the colors changed. We'll put in the tomato sauce in there. I'm gonna eyeball it. So everything in this cuisine is aga aga, which means like approximation. If you ask any Peranakan lady or old lady from Malaysia, Singapore, like how much of this, how much of this? Aga aga, aga aga. <laughs> okay lad, you know, you just see this much. They never tell you the exact portion because you know, you're working with dynamic ingredients. So sometimes your chili might not be as spicy as the last time you used it. Your ginger may not be as fragrant. So everything is aga aga in this cooking. This is your sweet chili. I'm from New Delhi, so there are no Malaysian restaurants where I come from. There's no Singapore restaurants. Chinese food is very different in India. My wife is half Chinese, but her family would take me to Chinatown and everything and introduce me to like real Chinese food. I think the flavors are like very similar to what we would eat back home. We're gonna introduce the crab in there. Just let it soak up all the juices of the rumpa. You're making your own seafood stock with a shell in there. The reason why I haven't added vinegar yet, because I'm just trying to understand the sourness of the tomatoes and the sauce together. How sour you want it, you can kind of adjust it to that. We're gonna add some water in there, and the shell will lend all its flavor to the sauce. Let's say about a cup, cup and a half. And that's when you can raise up the heat. We're gonna prep the mantha, which is the steamed bun. Definitely cut the bun before steaming it. You know, in Singapore, you, they would give you an option of either steaming it or frying it. This dish in itself is super rich. I prefer steaming it. At this point, you see it kind of coming together. Once the crab has changed its color to like a nice bright orange red, 
pretty much know it's done. You don't want to overcook your crab either. So we're just getting the garnishing ready. Simple, just scallion and cilantro. So we're not going to use this in the garnish, but do not throw away your stems of the cilantro. It's where all your flavor is. And a touch of sugar in here. So at this point, I just want the sauce to thicken up a little bit. Later, we're going to throw an egg in there and it gives you like that nice velvety texture. Just using some vinegar to sour it up a little bit more. You should just try to achieve your own balance of sour, sweet, and spicy. And you want this nice, beautiful color too. I like to plate the crab first and then put the egg in the sauce. It should be like not too runny, but not too thick either. And drop the sauce on top. It just makes it look prettier. Just drop some scallions. And there you have it, your Singapore chili crab. So get your hands dirty with this dish. I usually just start with the good stuff up here. And then, you know, like I usually fight my uh, significant other for the claw. Uh, but she's not here right now. <laughs> so I can pretty much go for the robe and I can have the claw. It's sour, it's spicy. There's a lot of different influences. There is an Indian influence, there's a Chinese influence, there's local Java. So you have all these different cultures coming together and making something beautiful like this. For the recipe, click the link below. Enjoy. Chinese style ginger scallion. As an Indian person, it doesn't satisfy my palate. You know, like anytime we go to any Asian restaurant, they just put hot sauce on my table. I don't even have to ask for it. 